1984 has been labeled the year of the turbine engine and unlimited hydroplane racing. The new Miss Tosti Asti is powered by one of them. Its driver, this man, Steve Reynolds, hopes to prove the turbine can run with any piston engine. However, he has two very formidable foes. The Union Bay Squire shop driven by this man, Mickey Riemann. After a seven-year absence, he returns to drive the boat which last year won the national title under the colors of Atlas Van Line. But the boat to beat today is the Budweiser, driven by this man, Jim Kropfeld. The Bud has won four straight here in Miami. Reynolds, Riemann, Kropfeld, the Unlimiteds coming up. From Marine Stadium, it's the Miami Budweiser Unlimited Hydroplane Regatta. Brought to you by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Miami, Florida, the international city where many a language is spoken and where many a traveler has come to enjoy. This is a sporting city, home of the NFL Dolphins, and it's a boating city for pleasure and where, for each of the past 14 years, the fastest boats in America have come to compete, the Thunderboats. Hello, everyone. I'm Don Poyer, along with the voice of hydroplanes for the past 20 years, Jim Hendrick. Of course, welcome to the 1984 Budweiser Unlimited Hydroplane Regatta. Now, this year, the format for 84 will be the draw system. The fan plan is no longer in existence, where the hot boats race in one heat, the slow boats in another. What do you think about that, Jim? Well, the hot boats are going to have to meet each other, Don, one way or the other, by the final heat. It's now the luck of the draw. Some of the hot boats could go against lesser competition and vice versa, but then again, I've seen it where they've all drawn <laughs> each other head to head all day long. Now, let's check the first heat of action, Heat 1A. Heat 1A will see the Squire Shop, driven by Mickey Riemann from Palm Desert, California, coming back after an absence of almost eight years. They qualified the Squire Shop at 112.9 miles per hour. Miss Renault will again this year be driven by Miller Irwin from Coral Gables, Florida. He's a hometown boy for this Miami area. He checked in with Miss Renault at 103.6. Chet's Music, a brand new haul this year, driven by Madison's Todd Yarling, just made the qualifying at 102.5. The 100 mile an hour qualifying is the minimum. And the Miss Tosti Osti, driven by Steve Reynolds out of Seattle, also returning after a few years' absence. He was the highest qualifier the past couple of days at 117.1. Jim, that's an awful good-looking heat. What do you think? And three different types of power plants in the four boats. Two Turbo Allison engines, a Merlin, and also a turbine engine. Now let's check Heat 1B. The host boat for this one, Miss Budweiser, checked in at 117 miles per hour. Jim Crop fell driving from Cincinnati, Ohio. We call him Speedy Gonzalez with that <laughs> mustache of his. American Speedy Printing has a new entry this year. And the driver, Ron Snyder, out of Pickle, Ohio, checked in at 112 mile an hour. The Miss Executone at 109.3. George Johnson out of Seattle. This is a brand new haul. And Team Velocity will be driven by Scott Pierce, also out of the Seattle area. They made the field at 102 mile an hour. And there's your lineup now for Heats 1A and 1B here in Miami. They look awful good. Yes, and three are conspicuous by their absence yes. because the Texmo, who is a outboard power, three engines outboard, driven by Buck Thornton, didn't make the qualifications. The All-Star Light, driven by Tommy DeEath, a former Gold Cup winner, his boat is here, did not qualify. And, of course, the big national defending champion, Atlas Van Lines, another turbine boat, will not join us with Chip Hadauer until next week at Syracuse. We'll be right back after this with Heat 1A in Miami. And welcome back to Miami on a very beautiful but warm and rather humid day as you see the fireboat out in the infield here on this mile and two-thirds course. Now the drivers, Todd Yarling, co-rookie of the year last year, will be driving Chet's Music this year, brand new boat. 
Milner Irvin in his second year with the Miss Renault. Outstanding driver. And back into racing on a full-time basis, Steve Reynolds with a Miss Tostiasi, also a brand new boat. And Mickey Riemann, 47 years young, with the Union Bay Squire Shop, the old Atlas Hull. And now, here is the lineup. As you see, Tosti Asti, one of the top qualifiers at 117, the Squire, the Renault, and Chet's Music. The official, Lee Shaneth. He is the chief referee, as he has been for many years. And the men working for him, Buddy Byers, Fred Alder, Paul McKee, Gene Whip in the turn, and Bob Schroeder. And here we go now for Heat 1A. And look, it's a great start, especially, uh-oh, Tosti Asti has now gone back into the pits. Evidently problems with that turbine engine. So now we have a three-boat race, and that man is way out in front. That is Todd Yarling and Chet's Music, the brand new boat. But look who's to the left of him. On his inside right now, as you see, Todd is the Squire Shop with Mickey Raymond cutting on the inside. Now coming out of that east turn, it's a three-boat race. You see the Renault through the spray of both boats. Milner Irvin in the back. But look at the lead now that the Squire Shop has picked up coming out of that first turn. Going down the main chute now, it's very short. They only get up to speeds of about 160 miles per hour here in Miami on this mile at two-thirds course. Mickey Riemann accelerating beautifully out of that first turn and going down the back chute. You see the distance he has now over Chet's music. Raymond, 47 years young as he comes in. You hear the engine cutting off a little bit. He's had a little problem with the engines down here. The uh, chief engineer, Jim Harvey, trying to get it dialed in now. This is, of course, the first race of the year. Milner Irvin, he's in second place, getting past Todd Yarling and Chet's music. Milner Irvin in his second year in that boat. And here comes Mickey Riemann with a speed of 105.339 in his first lap. Chet's Music in third place right next to Milner Irvin, who is in second with the Miss Renault. Mickey Riemann still on the Squire. Of course, that used to be the Atlas Van Lines, the two-time national championship boat. On the inside is the Renault, and on his outside hip, coming around is Todd Yarling, only 27 years old, a very good driver for his age, and is going to be around for a long time. Mickey Riemann coming down the back chute now, two-time national champion, once with the pay and pack, once with the Budweiser back in 77, trying to get a feel for these boats, especially being a cab over. He is strapped in using safety belts. Many of the new boats are going that direction now. They have most of the protection around the cockpit. It's the strongest part of the boat. Handling very well as you see that skid fin dig in as he comes around the western. It goes east and west here, not north and south like many of the courses around the country. The Squire shot the Union Bay. Mickey Riemann, second lap, 111 miles per hour. So he's moving along well. Chet's music coming around in third place. Odd Yarlick trying to get that boat dialed in, of course, with it being a brand new boat as well. That particular boat, that hole, is three years of age. And Bill Irvin, who says that boat is handling completely differently, much better, and has a higher wing, you might notice, from the 1983 season. That vertical spray, still familiar sight for that boat which used to be the Atlas Van Lines, now the Squire Shop. And Mickey Raymond has really got his foot to the floor and is moving well. Now down the back chute, there is your third place boat again, Chet's Music, owned by Jim Sedan out of Madison, Indiana. That's one of the stops on the tour for 1984, and it has, it has been in the past. Mickey Raymond riding beautifully. It can get very choppy out here in Miami and Biscayne Bay, but that boat is running very, very nicely. Again, the Miss Renault, owned by Jerry Shanin out of Detroit. It's got a Turbo Allison engine inside, and Milner Irvin is in charge of it right now as he is in second place here in Heat 1A in Miami. Again, the Union Bay Squire Shop, as you hear the engines of that Merlin come charging around that turn, sticking the skid fit in, coming around the apex buoy. On the other turn, of course, that's Jet's music, and I would imagine that the Squire is going to be able to lap him before long. In second place again. Milner Irvin, they call him Mr. Clean, an electrical contractor by trade, but for fun, and he's out here on weekends and traveling around the country. Mickey Raymond still at it, hard at work. Again, as we said, it took a while for him to get used to a cab over when he was driving some six, seven years ago. He was the conventional style when he was a national champion in the Budweiser. Of course, he drove the pay and pack boat, which is now the American Speedy Printing, an outstanding boat you'll see Ron Snyder drive in the next heat against the Budweiser. Mickey Raymond in total control right here in Miami with that particular boat. Jim Sedan and that John Stoddicker design boat out of Detroit. They got it done in time for plenty of testing before coming down to Miami. They're going for consistency this year as you see the Squire cutting inside and passing Chet's Music. But Chet's Music, they hope to go for consistency and as a result go for points on the 1984 tour. Oh, riding a little high is the Squire shop as it goes down the back chute. See a few people down there in the back stretch. Again, Chet's Music in third place, and there's the second place hole. 
Bill Irvin, Jerry Sheenis, Miss Renault. But a lot of technical work to the Renault for handling. Milner says it runs much better, as I mentioned earlier. Coming down to main shoot, the Squire Union Bay. Jets music coming down the main shoot. And here comes the Squire shop again, Mickey Riemann. Not a lot of different work done to that boat. Of course, they have Jim Harvey as the crew chief for the Union Bay Squire shop. He was with that boat when it was the Atlas Van Lines last couple of years. So he knows what that boat can do. It didn't take a lot of rebuilding or redesigning. It was ready to go. It was just a matter of painting it <laughs> and getting Mickey used to it and getting the engines ready. Riding a little high back there, a little light, you might notice, but this boat very forgiving as far as the blowholes on each side of the cockpit. And he is on his final lap. He'll win Heat 1A if he can keep that Merlin engine rolling now as it comes around the west turn as you see Miami in the skyline. He'll pick up 400 points with a victory here in Heat 1A. And Milner Irvin, of course, is in second place with Renault. But here's your winner of Heat 1A, Mickey Riemann, Union Base Wire Shop. So here are the numbers. Squire Shop with 400 points, 300 for the Renault. Chet's Music, 225, and Tosti Osti did not start. Let's go to the pits with Jim Hendrick. Okay, Don, we're down here with the winner of Heat 1A, Mickey Riemann. Welcome. Boy, you're soaked. Welcome yeah. back to the wars. Uh, thanks, Jim. It's sure delightful to be here with Squire and Union Bay. It's a kick in the pants, really. Listen, was the boat operating just as fast as you wanted to here in this first race? Yeah, we're still kind of working our way up a little bit. Uh, it was fine, but we'll go a little faster as the day progresses. After about eight years on the beach, how does it feel? Six years vacation. Is that about it? Six, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, just six years. I had you longer. Yeah, no, that's what it is. I missed six seasons. As far as the race course goes, I was at home running every one of them. How about the race course? Too short? Oh, it's it's demanding, but I like the little tight courses because it gives the driver a little more to do. I think it takes more driver's talent on these little tight ones than it does on the big one. There, it takes a lot of bravery. You're going awful fast. All right, more action to come. Don, back up to you. All right, Jim, as the temperature continues to rise in Miami, we'll prepare for Heat 1B coming up. Welcome back to Miami. We mentioned that in Heat 1A, the Tosti Asti was unable to start. Let's go down to the pits with Jim. Well, Don, we've got with us right now the driver of Tosti Asti, Steve Reynolds. Steve, just before the start, you return to the pits. What's wrong? Well, we're taking on a little water. When we, when we left the pits with the boat, it, we took a load of water over the deck, which got into the bilge. And the whole time I was running, I was taking salt water into the motor. That's one of the big... Uh, the big hazards with the turbine engine, you can't take any salt water inside the engine. Now, is the engine out? Is it done? No, no, no. We'll clean it out, and it'll be ready to go again, but it wasn't producing any power, and when I can't get any wind through it, the t temperature comes up, so I just brought it back in. So while Mr. Reynolds and company try to take care of their woes, it's time to go racing. Here's the lineup and the drivers for Heat 1B. First of all, all the way from Seattle, Scott Pierce, the Team Velocity. That's only a two-man team, by the way. George Johnson. Miss Executone driving a brand new Lucero design boat. Also, Ron Snyder on the American Speedy Printing, but driving this boat for a couple of years now. It's a good one. And of course, the man to beat with the boat to beat, the Budweiser and Jim Kropfeld. For qualifying times, and the boat's in Heat 1B, the Budweiser at 117, American Speedy Printing, as you see, Executone at 109, and Team Velocity at 102. Interesting stat, the Budweiser has won four straight here in Miami. Jim Kropfeld doing it last year, and the late Dean Chenoweth winning three straight before that. And here we go now with Heat 1B. On the outside, you see there nearest the camera is George Johnson and the Executone. It's a good start, and look at the great start by Ron Snyder and the American Speedy Printing in lane number three as he heads down for the east turn. The Budweiser in lane one as they go down to that turn. You see the Budweiser hugging the entrance buoy into the turn, and Snyder whipping it wide around the side as he goes down towards the back chute. George Johnson, the Executone, in that brand new Lucero design boat. Snyder with first place coming out of the turn now. Let's see where the Budweiser is. Here he comes on the inside. That's Jim Kropfeld. Ron Snyder there in the American Speedy Printing. And uh-oh, Scott Pierce is, looks like he's got a stack fire there now on the team velocity. In the meantime, there's your leader going down the back chute, heading for the second turn. Ron Snyder out of Ohio has driven that boat for a couple of years now. Last really conventional, competitive boat in the unlimited hydroplane circuit. In second place is the Budweiser staying right on the inside, and he's got great position on Snyder. He won't let him get inside. The Budweiser, the American Speedy Printing, Jim Kropfeld coming down, completing lap number one. The Budweiser. 
Ron Steiner again remaining on the way outside. Looks like he's coughing a little smoke on that turbocharged Allison engine. Who can forget when that was the paying pack and the Atlas Van Lines? What an incredibly great hole that is. One on the inside of it too bad either. The Budweiser, four-time winner, four straight victories here in Miami, as we mentioned earlier. There, Team Velocity fired up again. Scott Pierce is now rolling, and he is now active. Back to the leader as the Budweiser has taken the lead down the back chute here on lap two. More problems for Scott Pierce. Remember, he only has a two-man crew. It's something just that he got here from Seattle and qualified and was able to compete. The Budweiser now in first place as he is coming up down the main chute. And in second place is Ron Snyder and the American Speedy Printing. Jim Krupfeld out of Cincinnati, Ohio, completing a couple of laps now here in Miami. And the Budweiser Unlimited Hydroplane Regatta. The Budweiser. We thought maybe this boat wouldn't be running here in 1984 with a new boat being designed and built by Ron Jones in Seattle, in Kent, Washington, to be particular. But it wasn't ready. This boat certainly is competitive and still the boat to beat on the circuit is doing just fine right now in Miami, thank you. Second place, Ron Snyder still in lane two as you see the team velocity, the yellow boat swing way wide. Cropfell now coming down the back chute. He's keeping his speeds right around 100 miles per hour, so he's saving his engines as long as he can. He knows that if he gets into the finals, more than likely he'll have a challenge by the name of the Union Bay Squire Shop and Mickey Raymond, possibly the Tosti Osti, if they can get some points in heat two-way. There's three boats going down the back stretch. George Johnson keeping. Evidently, George Johnson, by the way, has dropped out the executive jump because that's Team Velocity running in third. This is the Budweiser, of course, coming around the west turn and heading down the main chute past the grandstands that holds roughly 15 to 20,000 people. Good crowd here in Miami. Jim Krupfeld, the 1982 Rookie of the Year. Coming up in second place, there's George Johnson, still trying to keep that new executive going. They have Merlin engines in there, so salt water may or may not be a problem. Budweiser running fine, as we said, keeping his speed down just a little bit to save those engines, the Griffin engines that they run. Here is George Johnson again, and back to Ron Snyder in second place here in Heat 1B in Miami, Florida. The Budweiser, owned, of course, by Bernie Little, the all-time winningest owner in unlimited hydroplane history. Bernie Little, of course, the, a member of the Florida Sports Hall of Fame. Ron Snyder, the pride of Ohio, and, of course, George Johnson out of Seattle and the Executo. They have a bright future in this race and in this business. Looks like Team Velocity, Scott Pierce, he's calling it a heat anyway, going back to the pits, back to the Budweiser again. That boat designed by Ron Jones, the son of Ted Jones, of course, the granddaddy of unlimited hydroplane racing. He designed the three-point hydroplane system. Good shot of Jim Krapfeld as he comes by, takes a look at the crowd. He's in good control now in first place of this heat 1B in Miami, hoping to pick up 400 points, which would put him in a tie with the Squire Shop, the union-based Squire Shop out of Seattle. George Johnson, the drama continues with him and his Merlins, the battle with the engine trying to keep it running. Very similar to the Atlas Van Lines boat of years past, which is now the Squire as far as the, the actual profile of the boat. And he's got big problems, it looks like. And there is your leader. What an ominous sight. The thundering engines of that Griffin inside the cowling of the Budweiser. Jim Crockfell doing a great job. He is, of course, a member of the APBA Hall of Fame, a national champion in the limited classes many, many times over. Ron Snyder. 47 years old, moving along, check that, 45 years old. Sorry, Ron, don't want to take two away from you. <laughs> Thanks for the wave, Ron. Ron Snyder, second place behind the Budweiser here in Heat 1B. The Budweiser wrapping around now on the final laps. Again, Ron Snyder, back to the Budweiser. Of course, he started back in 1982, if you recall, driving for the Budweiser. As you see, George Johnson, he's not giving up. i got to admire that. Still trying to keep his engine going. He hopes to get some points. If he can get it completed, he would pick up 225 points, possibly even get him into the finals. We'll have to wait and see. The Budweiser, smooth sailing. Flatting the rather choppy waters here in Miami quite well. And it looks like the Budweiser is in control. Jim Krupfeld and the Bud. And here he comes now for the checkered flag, the winner of Heat 1B, the Budweiser. So here are the numbers. The Budweiser, Jim Kropfeld and company with 400 points, American Speedy Printing with 300, and no finishes for Executone or Team Velocity. Let's go to the pits with Jim Hendrick. 
good. Hey, Don, I'll tell you right now, this guy showed him the short way at first. What happened? You, you took the lead twice and couldn't hold it. Well, we lost a couple plug wires there after the first lap, and uh, things were going a little sour, and I knew we only had to finish third to, to uh, get enough points to try to get in the finals, so we just cooled it. Jim and I were going to put on a race, but after things went a little sour, I'd, I wasn't going to push it. Let's save it for the next heat. The strategy continues down here in the pits, Don. There you see the Tosti Asti, Chet's music, and the Renault. We'll have 2A for you in just a minute. Welcome back to Marine Stadium in Miami, and let's go down to the pits again. Jim Hendrick has another report. All right, Don, let's check with the crew chief, Jerry Furhill. Did you get the engine all flushed out from the problem you had before? Uh, yes, we did. We're Salt at... water does that this turbine? Well, I think it just got an extra real big gulp of water this time. Uh, but we flushed it all out, and we're going to start it right away and make sure it's okay. But I think we found our little problem, too. We had a bad fuel filter, so um, that'll do it. happens. Yeah. Okay, thank you much. Okay, Steve Reynolds will be in action. Don, back to you. All right, Jim, that's good news. So as you watch the Squire Shop head out, here are the numbers. The Squire Shop in good shape, but the Tostiasti, a lot of work ahead of it in order to make the final. No points for them, for Executone or Team Velocity. We'll see how they fare now as Heat 2A is about to begin. The Tostiasti now going out to join Squire Shop and Company. Nice to see that boat running now. Of course, they've had problems with the salt water here in Miami. It really can cause fits for these turbine-powered boats. Steve Reynolds back on a full-time ride. There's Team Velocity. Scott Pierce chugging along, trying to get his Merlin engine running in that boat that is virtually all aluminum, only a couple of years old. And there's the brand-new boat, the Executone, with George Johnson trying to get his engine running. Oh, no! Now we've got the, the uh, Tosti Hosti trying to get the turbine going again, and here comes the one running boat. Of course, the boat with 400 points, the Union Bay Squire Shop with Mickey Riemann coming out for two-way. Looks like the day's over for that boat, being Team Velocity, but Reynolds has the turbine going again. Hallelujah. Well, we've got a two-boat race at least, and it's going to be that way. Stack fire now for the Executone, dousing that all right. In the meantime, we've got to start the race. Looks like it'll be a two-boat race. It'll be that man, Steve Reynolds, in the Tostiasti, the turbine-powered boat, and it is a rocket when it is running well against the inside boat, the Union Bay Squire Shop. Mickey Riemann on the inside with the Squire Shop. Steve Reynolds on the outside. Here they come. It's a good start. Good position is the Squire Shop, the former Atlas Van Lines, the two-time national championship boat. Digging in on that skid fin as he comes around the east turn now. Mickey Riemann, the oldest driver out there, 47 years old, Good positioning now on the Tostiasti, but remember, the Tostiasti is an incredibly fast boat when it is running well. It's not easy on this salt water, but Reynolds is doing quite well so far as they go down the back chute. Mickey Riemann, his first ride in over six and a half years, his first cab over design boat that he's ridden in. And look at Steve Reynolds swinging wide this time, trying to get a little whip out of that turn as he comes down wide, but it looks like Mickey Riemann has built his lead. First lap, 113 miles per hour, for Mickey Riemann. And there's the Tosti Asti with those helicopter turbine engine inside taking care of business. On the inside, nice job of driving by Mickey Riemann on rather calm waters, we might add, here in the cozy confines of Marine Stadium in Miami and Biscayne Bay. Mickey Riemann, the low profile of that boat. Steve Reynolds, the Tosti Asti. That used to be the backup boat, the display boat for the Pay and Pack racing team. A brand new boat, though, never touched a drop of water until it began testing in the state of Washington before coming down here. Good race as Reynolds is now moving up. I'd say about a two-second lead maximum as they go into the turn now. Reynolds, though, seems to be, yes, he's slowing down. Reynolds is slowing down and is going wide. My goodness, now we've got a one-boat race. Steve Reynolds has gone dead in the water. The Tosti Asti, more problems for that salt water, for that turbine, rather, and I would imagine the salt water is causing it. In the meantime, we've got a cakewalk for Mickey Riemann. He just has to keep that boat alive and well as he comes into the south turn. Let's check his speeds now. He's up at 112 miles per hour. He's not letting up at all. And that two-year-old boat, this is the third year now. You might remember the first year as an Atlas Van Lines that had a higher cowling and cockpit walls around the driver. Then they went to this type of profile with double honeycomb aluminum on both sides of the driver. It's virtually the strongest part of the boat and very safe for the driver. Steve Reynolds still trying to fire up that helicopter. 
Urban Engine, what an ominous sight as he sits there and watches his chief competitor go cruising by. Mickey Riemann coming down the main chute past the grandstands here at Marine Stadium. Everything's going Mickey's way so far, has driven brilliantly, and the boat has behaved and performed very well for crew chief Jim Harvey, who came over in the deal when Bob Style, the owner of this boat, purchased it from Fran Muncy and Muncy Racing Industries in the Atlas Van Lines. Well, there's quite a fleet, George Johnson and Scott Pierce getting towed back into the pits. Steve Reynolds, he's given up. He'd like a tow. Oh, no. <laughs> he's going to bleed for it. Here comes Mickey Riemann. They've shortened the race. One lap, it appears. It'll only be five laps. Mickey Riemann picks up another 400 points here in heat two-way. Steve Reynolds? No, oh. <laughs> well, I'll give him a 6-3 on difficulty. Steve, oh, wait a minute. Now we've got a fire. It appears to be some sort of stack fire in the Squire shop. Now, Mickey Riemann has been through this many, many times. I'm sure if anybody can handle it, it'll be him. It appears to be a stack fire of some kind. He's working his way back towards the pits now. Let's see if he can douse it. The firemen have been called in the pits. Here he comes now. Let's see if the flames can be doused as he brings it in near the dock. Sometimes when they shut it off, they can. It appears he has done so. Boy, you can see the burning on the cowling right now. Quickly, let's go down to the pits. Jim Hendrick. Bob Style, you're a little shell-shocked about fires because you've had a few explosions in your boats before. We've had a few of them, and I don't get too excited. I understand you're a little hot about something happening to the fire department? Well, every time we have a fire, uh, the fire department always stands around and looks at it, and our crew has always put it out, and once again, we did it again. Well, do you think maybe perhaps they're a little afraid without orders from your crew chief? No, the orders were given by the crew chief, and the fire started, but the boats never came, and the people never came. The crew chief definitely handles the majority of the orders on all that. But it's going to be all right. Very good, yeah, but luckily our crew got aboard to save it because the fire had started underneath the cowling. They took the cowling off and dumped the water. Otherwise, it could have got the fuel lines. It had some more serious problems other than that. Close call down in here in the pits, Don, but it's okay now. All right, Jim, adding up the points. Squire Shop sitting pretty with 800 points. The Tostiosti, Executone, and Team Velocity still looking for their first points of the day. Let's go back down to the pits now with Jim Hendrick. I noticed Dr. Finch just left. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You're just a little wet, but it feels good. <laughs> it feels good, and it's a hot day down here in Miami. Now, what happened for the second time? Well, we're right back to the same situation. Salt water and turbines just don't mix very well. We got into a compressor stall, and it overtemped, so uh, I didn't have any choice but to shut it down. You gave a battle there for the first lap and three quarters, and then nothing. Yeah, yeah, you know, we were running fun. It was the first time we'd be running competitive all day long. It was a relief to get going fast. Well, there's always next week. Oh, yeah, next week. And, uh, you know, don't forget the turbines. We're still back in it. There's three of us. Don't you piston guys go away. <laughs> back to you, Don. <laughs> well, Steve Reynolds is done for the day, but we're not. We'll be right back with more in a minute. You're looking at young Danny High, crew chief of the Executone. Been through a tough day trying to get that boat running. Jim Henrik is down there with the team. Let's see what he's got. Jerry, it's got to be frustrating. What's happening? Uh, I don't know, Jim. Wish we knew. <laughs> I can't tell you anymore. I just... It looks like carburation. Am I wrong? I don't know. I honestly don't know the answer to your question. If we, if we knew, we, we would have solved it. All right, so you're out of this one, but Syracuse coming up next week. Yeah, we'll, we're going to put it together, and we'll be up at Syracuse, and we'll put on a good show for everybody. I'm, I really feel bad about what happened today, but that's boat racing, as you know, Jim. Thank you. Jerry Oaksmith out of Seattle. There will be better days. And now it's time for Heat 2B, the Budweiser, 400 points, American Speedy Printing, 300, Renault, 300, and Chet's Music, consistent, 225. Here we go with Heat 2B. And now we've just gotten word that the Renault has gone back into the pits, an engine problem. There's the Budweiser on the outside for 2B. American Speedy Printing and Chet's Music in lane number one with young Todd Yarling, the driver. Here we go for the start of Heat 2B, and it's a good one. Budweiser on the outside, American Speedy Printing in the middle, and on the lane number one is Chet's Music as they go down into the east turn. The Budweiser with Jim Kropfeld electing to stay wide 
First to the turn, though, is Ron Snyder out of Ohio, driving the American Speedy Printing around the outside with that great acceleration in those Griffin engines. The Budweiser trying to stay right on the outside hip of Ron Snyder and the American Speedy Printing. Ron Snyder, 45 years old, out of Ohio, and right now, what a great race we've got going down that short backstretch. Now it's simply a matter of racing in that straightaway. Who's got the most power? We know the Bud does, but he runs out of straightaway as they get into that west turn here on the first lap in Miami and heat 2B. Snyder with those turbocharged Allison engines. The Budweiser, the Griffin on the outside. Great race here in lap number one. Kropfeld, of course, an all-time member of the APBA Hall of Fame. Ron Snyder doing a great job, though, of holding his own. He has good position in lane one. The Budweiser outside. I would say it's about a boat like late. No, they're dead even as they go past the, the uh, start-finish line. Now back down past the entrance buoy into the east turn. Again, Snyder still holding on on the inside. That's a great boat, one of the winningest holes in the business of unlimited hydroplane racing. The Budweiser, however, has won here four straight times. Jim Cropfield got his first ever unlimited victory here in Miami in 1983. And now it appears, no, wait a minute, Ron Snyder still accelerating, trying to hold his own against the Budweiser. And again, they run out of straightaway as they set up now for this west turn, and they go around and head for that entrance buoy into the turn. Snyder. Cropfield having a little bit of fun right now as the bud, as you see, that skid fin. Look how it digs in to keep that boat from sliding to the outside. Cropfield running a beautiful race, staying on the outside hip of Ron Snyder. Snyder, who's an acoustical contractor by trade. Jim Cropfield, he has a buffer shop in Cincinnati. Boy, they're making noise right now. Cropfield and Snyder having a lot of fun, as a matter of fact. Their speed, 104 and 103, respectively, for the bud. And for Ron Snyder and the American Speedy Printing. Back to the next turn. By the way, Chet's music. There he is, Todd Yarling. Again, they're going for points to be safe and consistent. And it looks like they're doing quite well, as a matter of fact. They could make it to the final if they get some points here. We move on again, back down the back stretch. As you see, the Budweiser and Cropfell beginning to widen out that lead. Snyder, though, trying to give them a little bit of fun. Still has that inside position. Still a beautiful haul. We can remember when it was the pay and pack in the Atlas van lines years ago. Bill Muncy drove that boat. Mickey Reeves, as a matter of fact, drove it. It's a wonderful, wonderful hole, and it has done so well in the past. So is that boat. We hope to see the new Budweiser, maybe the end of this year, more than likely next year. But the old hole's doing just fine. Thank you for Jim Cropfield right now as they come down the main chute again. Jim Cropfield, the speeds are right around 108 to 109 miles per hour going against the American Speedy Printing. Now with that beautiful shot and those 30-some thousand people watching from the shores here in Miami in Biscayne Bay, Marine Stadium, we see the Budweiser, the marvelous U-12 swinging around. Jim Cropfell based out of Cincinnati, Ohio, in his third year now with Bernie Little and the Budweiser racing team. He was all everything. Let's face it, a legend in the limited classes for hydroplane racing, Ron Snyder. He was rookie of the year one year back in, I believe it was 76, when he drove the Miss Madison. And of course, the Miss Budweiser, as a matter of fact, that year when he was Rookie of the Year. Jim Cropfeld, Rookie of the Year himself. You see Jets music in the foreground. Budweiser about to lap. Todd Garlick in that brand new John Stottinger design and built boat out of Detroit. The Budweiser. And in second place, the American Speedy Printing with Ron Snyder. By the way, you may remember when it was the Miss Madison. It has been the Kenny Toyota during the Western Swing in the United States. It is still owned by the community of Madison, Indiana, one of the stops on the 1984 Unlimited Hydroplane Circuit, as it has been for many years. Well over 100,000 people show up for that race. And that boat will be running out there as well as this one. It'll be the host boat, matter of fact, the Miss American Speedy Printing with Ron Snyder aboard. Jim Kropfeld driving one of the winningest holes himself. Bernie Little, the owner of that boat, of course, and he is the winningest owner in unlimited hydroplane racing. 45 wins coming into 1984. Six national titles, five gold cups, and it looks like the Budweiser. You can say what you want, how old that boat might be, but it's still the boat to beat. You've got to wonder with the Atlas van lines up in Seattle testing if it's going to be able to threaten the Budweiser in 1984. Looks like Ron Snyder having a tough time trying to get some of the humidity, <clears throat> excuse me, the oil and everything else off of his shield. As the Budweiser continues to roll, it's by far the most popular boat down here. I'd say the most popular driver has to be Milner Irvin, though, of the Miss Renault. 
Milner is from Coral Gables, very close here to Miami, out here at Biscayne Bay. A lot of nice press, nice write-ups about Milner down here in the newspapers in Miami. Todd Yarling going along again in that brand new boat. It is a supercharged Allison in that engine rather than turbocharged, much simpler design, a little easier to keep healthy and running. And the Budweiser, of course, with those huge, heavy, but very, very powerful Griffin engines in the Budweiser, picking up another 400 points, winner of Heat 2B. So here's how it looks coming into the final now. Budweiser with another 400 points to 800. American Speedy Printing, 600. Chet's Music doing well. Renault with 300 points, not starting Heat 2B. The Squire Shop will join these four boats for the final. Jim is now down with the Renault camp. Let's see what he has to say. Well, down this boat that won the World Championship last year at Houston, Texas, Clear Lake. And so far this year, uh, how do you feel? Well, I feel good. It's just got a lot of little mistakes we've made, and, but we're getting them. And uh, we got a lot of salt. We rearranged our turbos, and we're picking up a lot of spray, and it's knocking out the engine when we're Could you get ready for the last heat? We're ready for the last heat. We'll be there. Okay, that's what we wanted to count on, so we'll have a full field. We'll be there. And, Jim, you can tell by Jim Kurth that it is serious time. Final preparations for the final heat. We'll have more in a moment. Back here in the pits, the activity feverish as they get ready for the final. Crew chief Dave Cully from the Budweiser working hard. Dave, is it going to be ready? Any problems? No, this is just a routine engine change, Jim. We run two heats on one engine and change, put a new one in for the final. Satisfied with the way it's been handling so far for Jim Cropfeld? Yeah, it's running a little rich today, but other than that, the boat's handling well. We'll lean it out a little bit for the final heat. It'll have a little more power. Okay, we'll be watching the Miss Budweiser in action in the final heat coming up. And right now, as we get off the Miss Budweiser, I understand that Don Poyer's down there by the American Speedy, or let's see, no, he's down by the Squire Shop. So let's go down to Don while I make my way to American Speedy. All right, Jim, you found me. Nice play. I'm with Jim Harvey now, the Squire Shop, the crew chief, for the final now. Are you doing anything out of the ordinary? Uh, basically not. We had a, a motor in the second heat that we wanted to run again in the final. We're just leaving it in for the final. And uh, we didn't have to run that hard in our preliminary. And we're going through the systems to make sure everything is functional and uh, see if we can put it all together for the final heat. What do you feel as far as that final now? You see, uh, as far as going against the Budweiser, power-wise, you guys have been pretty equal time-wise today. Well, it's uh, we wanted to get hooked up with them earlier in a preliminary heat to see what we'd have to do to run with them. And, uh, we didn't have that opportunity, so uh, we feel pretty comfortable with what we've got to work with, and I think uh, I think you'll see a few surprises out there. Okay. Jim Harvey, crew chief here at the uh, Union Bay Squire Shop, and now Jim Hendrick is over at the American Speedy Printing. Jim, go ahead. Okay, Don, I will if I can get a hold of Bob Hughes, team manager for Madison Incorporated. The owner is the town of Madison, Indiana, 13,000 strong sponsor, of course, American Speedy Printing. Uh, are you satisfied with performance so far? Yes, take a look at that, Jim. Uh, we had a little problems out there in that last heat. Uh, as you noticed there at the last of the race, he kind of went down a little bit, and we're trying to figure that out. It seemed to have a little bit of fuel problems. Okay, but this turbine engine, turbo engine, I should say, uh, is it, uh, you have enough? Oh, yeah, we're, we're taking to death with it, and it's doing good. You, mean you haven't changed have, engines for this, no, have you? we're going to change. We're just getting ready to change. We got our, our final heat engine we're going to put in, yes. So we think we'd be a little better off with our engine we tested this morning early. <laughs> okay, Don, they're going to change an engine, as he said, in the turbocharged American Speedy printing for this final heat. And I know the Budweiser's changed engines, the Squire's changed engines, so the activity increases as we come down to the climatic final here in the Budweiser Unlimited Regatta in Miami, Florida. And Jim, a reminder to our viewers, points mean nothing when you get to the final heat. It is winner take all. The finals of the Miami Budweiser and Limited Hydroplane Regatta coming right up. Welcome back to Miami. Jim Kropfeld of the Budweiser ready to go for the final today. Here's Mickey Riemann of the Squire Shop. I'm wondering, <laughs> where's my boat? Is it ready? 
That's Jim Harvey, the crew chief for the Squire. Meanwhile, let's see what Crawfield has to say about the final. Well, I don't know. I think I really goofed up. I'm not too worried about the race, but I forgot the ice down the beer, and it won't be cold when I get back. All right, let's look at our gladiators for the final heat. Todd Yarling, rookie of the year last year aboard Chet's Music, the new boat. Milner Irvin, in his second year with the Miss Renault, is in the final, was a winner last year in the World Championships in Houston. Ron Snyder, he won the first race of the year last year, 1983. He'd love to do it again. And Mickey Riemann, Union Bay Squire shop, hasn't had a win in some time, coming back after a six-and-a-half-year absence. And the man to beat, Jim Kropfeld in the Budweiser, going after their fifth straight win in Miami. And here we go now with the final heat of the day. The money's on the table, and it looks like it'll be a good start. Mickey Riemann way on the inside. It's the Budweiser in the middle, and on the outside it is Ron Snyder and the American Speedy Printing. Here we go with the final heat. Into the east turn, Mickey Riemann on the inside with the Union Bay Squire shop. In the middle of the Budweiser, it appears that Jim Cropfeld feels he's got the power to not take lane number one, and he's in good shape right now as he goes around that east turn. Ron Snyder and the American Speedy Printing on the inside. You see, on the outside, rather, and on the inside, Mickey Raymond in the Squire shop. Now the acceleration down the back chute. Jim Cropfeld with his foot to the floor, finally stretching out that Griffin engine, and he is getting all the power he needs as he goes down the back chute. Beautiful, beautiful job of driving by Jim Cropfeld. He had the power to stay in lane two and get around the Squire shop and get first place as we here compete in the final of the day. Jim Cropfeld, first place. Coming around to complete lap number one. Bernie Little, the owner, of course, of the Budweiser, all-time winningest owner in unlimited hydroplane racing, watching from the pits. Jim Krupfeld, the Budweiser. Speed for lap number one, 115 miles per hour. There's your battle for second and third place, though, between the Squire and the American Speedy Printing. Chet's music, by the way, fourth place. The Renault has dropped out and gone back into the pits. Engine problems, we understand. Great battle, though, for second and third. Riemann with good position on the inside. That's the Budweiser, the leader, of course, as they're on lap number two. But a great battle for second and third place between the Squire Shop and, of course, American Speedy Printing. Budweiser, as we said, 115 miles per hour on the first lap. And Jim Kropfeld is simply pulling away from these two boats. That being Ron Snyder in second place, doing a great job for that older hull. And, of course, the former Atlas fan line, now driven by Mickey Riemann under the red, white, and brown colors of the Squire Shop. The Budweiser now coming around the turn, completing lap number two. Coming down past the grandstands, the main area here for the viewers, the Budweiser in first place, the Squire Shop, and Ron Snyder still having a good battle as they come down now to the east turn once again. Speed for the Budweiser, 114 miles per hour. And that's the battle for second and third place. Ron Snyder has done an excellent job of driving today and a great job by John Humes, the crew chief, to keep it running, that turbocharged Allison engine. Again, that battle, Riemann with good position on the inside as he keeps Snyder out on his hip as they go around that east turn and head down back towards the, the back chute. Here and very close to that beach, by the way, a great viewing area here at Marine Stadium in Miami. The Budweiser with Jim Cropfeld going after another victory. He got his first ever victory in the unlimited class last year in this very race in Miami. Jim Cropfeld, first place, speed 107.3 miles per hour. He's slowing down just a little bit as he holds on to that lead over this boat, the Squire Shop, bouncing around a little bit. This is Mickey Riemann. Uh-oh, he caught his spots on. Yes, he's clipped the buoy. He clipped the exit buoy out of the west turn. Now he's got to go all the way around on a U-turn to get back, make up that buoy. And in the meantime, of course, Ron Snyder has taken over second place in the American Speedy Printing. There's your second place boat. Ron Snyder, American Speedy Printing, and now Mickey Riemann's got a big job ahead of him, giving chase to Ron Snyder. First place, Budweiser, Jim Kropfeld. Second place, Ron Snyder, American Speedy Printing. Third place, Squire Shop. Fourth place, Jets Music. The Budweiser. We don't know if this boat will ever race again in Miami. It may be retired by next year at this time, but boy, what a performance. Here's Jets Music. Now, wait a minute, we just got word that the Squire Shop is cocked out. So now, Jets Music is in third place with young Todd Yarling, only 27 years old. The consistency seems to be paying off for them today. They could finish in third place today in the final if they keep the boat running. 
first place, the Budweiser, Jim Crawfeld, as usual. He's been out front all day. He hasn't had spray in his face at all this afternoon in Miami. In second place is Ron Snyder in the American Speedy Printing. But as you see, the checkered flag is out for Bernie Little's 46th all-time victory as an owner and another victory for Jim Cropfeld in Miami and the Budweiser. Bernie Little celebrating with his wife and crew down in the pit. And it will go down in the record books as victory number five in a row here in Miami for the Budweiser camp. Now, wait a minute. Look at this. American Speedy Printing has just gone dead in the water. Three quarters of a lap from the finish line. And that means Todd Jarling and Chet's music playing somewhat like the tortoise against the hare is going to pick up second place here in Miami. Congratulations to Jim Saddam and his crew. Now here's another look at the Squire shop and what happened in that turn. You see right there, the left sponsor took a bit of a dive, caught some water, and simply threw the boat to the left. And Mickey Riemann had no chance but to run into the exit buoy coming out of the west turn. As a result, he had to make a very big U-turn, come around, make up this cliff buoy. And in the meantime, boy, he had a lot of ground to make up. Officially, here's how the day ended. Budweiser now with 1,200 points overall for the year. First place, Chet's Music again. Consistency paid off for that team. Coming in second, American Speedy Printing was third. The Union Bay Squire Shop, fourth place, and the Miss Renault with Milner Irvin coming in number five. In just a moment, we'll have a chat with winning driver Jim Kropfell. Stay with us. Okay, Don, back down here in the pit area, we've got a happy sponsor rep, Vice President of Budweiser Brand for Anheuser-Busch, Joe Martino. You have to be pretty happy with this first race. Oh, very happy. Um, when you win the first one, that's a great start for the World Championship. Now let's switch over to the owner. There's a guy, Bernie Little, who has won seven times out of 14 events in the last three times in a row. Getting to be a habit, Bernie. Yes, Jim, and we want to keep Miss Budweiser out front, and uh, I think we'll be able to do that with a driver like Jim Kropfeld. Crappy, you didn't have too much troubles, did you? Uh, though I saw Mickey <laughs> Riemann the square on your hip there for a little while. He should well, have Mickey, been in the seat. Huh? Yeah, he should have. Yeah. Everybody says it was so easy. I said, oh, you should have been next to Mickey. Because Mickey was running good in the square. But uh, Bernie told me to take the Miss Budweiser and go out and uphold our tradition here in Miami and come back with a victory, and that's what we did. Well, congratulations. This is the anniversary of your very first win in unlimited hydroplane racing. That's right. Uh, it's a good way to start off again, and hopefully we'll do a lot better than last year. Okay, they came close last year. You know, the World Championship and the National High Point Championship lost out at the very last race of the year at Clear Lake, Texas. They hope to do better. We've got nine more races. And now back up to you, Don. All right, Jim Henrik, thank you very much. And that'll do it for the 1984 Budweiser Unlimited Hydroplane Regatta. Next stop, Syracuse, New York. For Jim Henrik, I'm Don Poyer. Thanks for joining us. So long from Miami. <laughs>